it was a major cultural phenomenon. The Victoria's Secret fashion show in its heyday was full of glitz and glamour, bejeweled bras, and over-the-top angel wings. Giselle, Heidi, and Tyra stomping down the runway. You look at all these gorgeous women just strutting in confidence. So much power and so much beauty. With iconic performances from Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber. But it all came crashing down in 2018 after a series of scandals, including controversial comments in vogue from one executive about transgender and plus size models. I knew I had a, a pretty sensational uh, interview on, on my hands. Pretty much from start to finish, I was uh, jaw on the floor. And as for the show itself, its models were getting skinnier and skinnier. We didn't see new talent. We didn't see diverse bodies. Selling the fantasy was more important than catering to everyday women. For years now, Victoria's Secret, which was once the largest lingerie retailer in the U.S., has tried to overhaul its image. The brand quickly moving away from the iconic scantily clad angels to naming ambassadors instead, including trans model Valentina Sampaio and athletes like Megan Rapino and Eileen Gu. I think it remains to be seen if these efforts are enough. Let's see that, you know, it's not just them jumping in on a trend, that this is actually something that's here to stay. Now it's rebranding its iconic show for the first time in five years, hoping to recapture some of its former magic with a more diverse and inclusive set of models, designers, and other creatives. Fashion is deep. Yeah. The new fashion show isn't really a fashion show at all. It's a feature-length documentary called The Tour 23. Rather than women being the objects of the gaze, they're in front of the camera, they're behind the camera. And I think that that goes a, a good way to reframing what the company stands for. The film marks a new chapter in the brand's history. I do believe that they want to achieve something greater and to the next level and do more for this community of women. But the question remains, is it too little, too late? The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show was first broadcast to the world in 1999 to much fanfare. Hey guys. She is nice. Oh. So this is what we thought was all about, huh? Yeah. Baby got back, huh? Year after year, the lingerie became flashier, the stage grander, the acts bigger. As a model, your, your pinnacle was Victoria's Secret or Vogue or, you know, Sports Illustrated. At its peak, more than 10 million people tuned in. Um, I'm excited to see everyone. I'm excited to see all these beautiful girls strive. Nightline was behind the scenes at its last show in 2018, which the company touted as one of its most diverse yet. And I'm just so happy that Victoria's Secret is including models of color. We're celebrating diversity. We have angels from all over the world. I think diversity is so important. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't empowered. Still, many women felt as though the models never reflected the increasing diversity of the brand's target consumers. I would judge my body so harshly and really compare it to the women on that catwalk. I felt, why not just show a few more sizes on that runway or a few more ages? Like, what's, what's so wrong about that? And then it completely went the opposite way. It went very young and it went skinnier, if possible. I mean... I was so disappointed. I stopped loving them as a brand. Australian model Robin Lawley, once a huge fan of the show who even auditioned for it twice, has long been critical of Victoria's Secret and what it represented to many young women around the world. If you're walking Victoria's Secret if you're in that fashion show, you weren't eating. You know, these girls were going to crazy lengths to walk that runway. I mean, some of them weren't even drinking water you know, because it was like muscle definition on their bodies. In 2018, she started an online petition, urging people to boycott the Victoria's Secret fashion show, writing, as women, I want us all to join together and say, I am enough, I am beautiful, I am unique, and I want to see my body shape represented in your shows.
I remember how I felt as a teenager by watching such shows and not seeing my body represented. I have a daughter and I wouldn't want my daughter to go through that at all. You know, I'm not going to let her go through that. But for Robin, Victoria's Secret's efforts to change its image feel hollow. I think the rebranding for me personally is a little bit too late. I do want them to change, but I want the show back. <laughs> I don't want it in TV form. I want the actual show back and I want them doing that down that runway to an audience like they used to do. The criticism goes beyond just a lack of inclusivity. In 2018, a longtime powerful senior executive, Ed Razik, made controversial comments in a Vogue interview saying Victoria's Secret doesn't hire, quote, transsexuals for their iconic runway show because the show is a fantasy. Nicole Phelps wrote that 2018 Vogue article. The interview that we published came out the morning of the show of the show taping in 2018. But by the time uh, the show would have come around the following year, the, the company decided to cancel the show. There had been growing criticism. Razik later apologized for his, quote, insensitive remarks and resigned the next year. I think the brand got in trouble saying that they weren't representative of all types of bodies. You know, it didn't make all women feel sexy. It just made a certain category of women feel sexy. And that's a problem when you're talking about something as intimate and as personal as lingerie. But for all its efforts to move past the controversies, public perception of the brand is still on shaky ground. Since going public in the summer of 2021, Victoria's Secret stock price has been on the downward trend. They have to play catch up to the brands that came out saying, we see you and we represent you and we have something for you. And we're not going to make you feel ashamed of what your body looks like in its most intimate shape. Victoria's Secret has to start from ground zero with that. I do think our generation is becoming more and more conscious about our purchasing choices. We think about um, what kind of image are they trying to portray and we think about diversity a lot. 25-year-old social media influencer Zoe thinks the company can bounce back. I think it still holds a lot of power in the market and in the culture. So if it were to make a comeback and be a little bit more inclusive, it will do a lot of greatness for the new generation of young girls where they feel like their body is beautiful in one way or another. Still, she says there is a certain nostalgia for the former years. Why can't these women have the same type of glam outfits and wings as the prior runway shows? I feel like Victoria's Secret, if anything, they're trying to steer away from that to show their new image. But it just so happened that people also really miss the old image that they have and they just wish to see it on more diverse individuals. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.